Envision a force so immense that it can reshape weather patterns globally and even influence the destinies of ancient civilizations. The intricate interplay of factors, including our position in the solar system, the Earth's rotation, atmospheric dynamics and seasonal variations, governs both short-term weather and long-term climate. Adding to this complexity, our planet undergoes El Niño and La Niña events every few years, representing two extremes of the El Niño Southern Oscillation, commonly referred to as ENSO. But before we dive deeper into how La Niña could change the world as we know it, let's take a moment to connect. If you find value in exploring hidden truths and understanding the forces shaping our future, hit that like button, share this video with someone curious about the planet, and don't forget to subscribe to the Interconnected Zone. It costs you nothing but helps us touch more lives with knowledge that matters. The history of ENSO stretches back tens of thousands of years, potentially impacting the stability of some of the world's most significant ancient societies. Recently, one of the five most intense El Niño events on record concluded in June 2024, following months marked by unprecedented ocean temperatures, severe heat stress on coral reefs, drought conditions in the Amazon rainforest, and extreme rainfall that posed serious risks for North America. With La Niña expected to commence in late 2024 or early 2025, what transformations can we anticipate on both global and local scales? Join me as we delve into the dynamics of our evolving planet, the ENSO phenomenon, and the implications of La Niña for Earth. El Niño and La Niña phases generally persist for 9 to 12 months, though they can extend over several years. In this video, we will explore the mechanics of this cycle, define neutral periods, and discuss the potential outcomes as we transition toward the La Niña phase in the upcoming months. Global atmospheric patterns are significantly influenced by various events that can lead to severe weather and environmental damage. Picture yourself aboard the International Space Station, gazing down at our planet. From this vantage point, the Earth's round shape is evident, and it becomes clear that sunlight does not warm the surface uniformly. At the equator, sunlight strikes directly, delivering more heat and light than at the poles, where the sun's rays hit at a slanted angle. This differential heating is akin to how a hot air balloon ascends, or how steam rises from a boiling pot. The intense sunlight at the equator warms the air, causing the hot, moist, low-pressure air to rise into the atmosphere. As this warm air ascends, it cools and condenses, forming clouds. This process explains the lush tropical rainforests found near the equator. The continuous rise of warm air displaces cooler air, which then moves north and south, eventually sinking back to the surface. This movement creates a cycle known as the Hadley cell rotation, where cool air flows from areas of high pressure back toward the equator, perpetuating the cycle. But how does this global air circulation driven by solar energy connect to El Niño and La Niña phenomena? The surface winds generated by these Hadley cells are redirected toward the equator due to the Earth's rotation, a process known as the Coriolis effect. This effect is responsible for the formation of trade winds on either side of the equator, and fluctuations in these winds signal the onset of El Niño and La Niña events. The chemical signatures of the El Niño Southern Oscillation ENSO, extend back tens of thousands of years, as evidenced by paleoclimate indicators such as coral fossils, and we have documented records of NSO events dating back to the 1500s. Notably, El Niño occurrences may have played a role in Spain's conquest of the Incan Empire during the 1500s, and in the late 1700s, they likely contributed to agricultural failures and social unrest that ignited the French Revolution. 
Despite this extensive history of ENSO activity and its significant influence on global weather patterns and ecosystems, it wasn't until the 20th century that we began to unravel the underlying mechanisms. The first major breakthrough occurred in the 1920s when British scientist Sir Gilbert Thomas Walker sought to understand the dynamics of monsoon strength in India. In his quest for predictive insights, he discovered the Southern Oscillation, a recurring shift in air pressure across the equatorial Pacific Ocean. This oscillation was part of a larger air circulation pattern that had previously gone unrecognized, which was later termed the Walker Circulation. While Hadley cells circulate air in a north-south direction, the Walker Circulation operates by moving air east and west over the equatorial Pacific. Unlike Hadley cells, which are driven by solar energy, the Walker Circulation is influenced by the easterly trade winds and ocean temperatures. It took another 60 years for scientists to link these air pressure fluctuations over the Pacific with the alternating patterns of warm and cool surface waters in the region. The phenomenon we now recognize as the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, is a complex interplay of various climatic factors. Every few years, we observe notable variations in the surface temperature and trade winds across the Pacific, indicating an impending alteration in the Walker circulation. These alterations, known as El Nino or La Nina events, can disrupt weather patterns and ecosystems globally. So, what occurs on Earth during these events? In neutral ENSO phases, both sea surface temperatures and trade winds remain close to average. During these neutral times, trade winds sweep across the Pacific Ocean, pushing warm surface waters from South America towards Australia and Asia. As this warm water shifts westward, it allows cooler, nutrient-rich waters to rise to the surface in a process called upwelling, which nourishes phytoplankton and supports various marine life. In these neutral periods, global weather patterns tend to follow expected norms, including typical hurricane activity in the Atlantic and standard monsoon rains in Southeast Asia. The Walker Circulation facilitates the ascent of warm, moist air over regions like Southern Asia, Northern South America and parts of Africa. El Nino is characterized as the warm phase of the ENSO cycle, marked by above average sea surface temperatures in the Pacific. This shift not only alters global weather patterns, but also poses serious threats to ecosystems. Take coral reefs, for instance. These vital ecosystems depend on specific sea surface temperatures to thrive and sustain some of the planet's most diverse marine life. Corals maintain a symbiotic relationship with algae, but rising water temperatures can lead to the expulsion of this algae, resulting in a bleached, colorless state that leaves corals vulnerable. While a reef can recover from bleaching if conditions improve swiftly, the risk of mortality remains high. The last El Nino event was particularly severe, with an astonishing 99.7% of Atlantic tropical reefs experiencing heat stress severe enough to cause bleaching, marking the fourth global mass bleaching event in recorded history. Additionally, the warmer waters in the Pacific and weakened trade winds associated with El Nino hinder the upwelling of cooler, nutrient-rich waters, creating a critical situation where diminished phytoplankton populations force many fish to either migrate or face extinction. This disruption sends shockwaves through the food chain, affecting various marine species. The coastal families and communities that depend on these fish for food and income. The repercussions of El Nino can be catastrophic. Having explored the conditions during a neutral ENSO phase and the destructive impacts of El Nino as witnessed in 2023 and 2024, one must now consider the implications of the forthcoming La Nina phenomenon which represents the opposite extreme. This phase is characterized by unusually strong trade winds 
and cooler than normal sea surface temperatures in the Pacific. While El Niño typically leads to a shift away from neutral conditions, La Niña can be understood as an intensified version of those neutral conditions across much of the globe, with some notable exceptions. During La Niña, the usual columns of rising warm air over South Asia and eastern North America become more pronounced, while the typical warm air column over Africa undergoes a reversal. Just as your experience of El Niño varies based on your location, the same applies to La Niña. As of August 2024, the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration forecasts a 66% likelihood of La Niña developing between September and November 2024, with a 74% chance that it will persist into the Northern Hemisphere's winter of 2025 to 2026. Current models suggest there is about a 50% chance that this La Niña event will reach moderate strength. However, while predictions of a La Niña occurrence are generally reliable, the anticipated intensity of these events can fluctuate month to month. The conclusion of a strong El Niño in 2024 does not guarantee that the subsequent La Niña will be equally intense. In some cases, a robust El Niño is followed by a strong La Niña, while in others, it leads to a weaker counterpart. Historically, there have only been 10 instances where the ENSO has transitioned between El Niño and La Niña within a single year, as is expected this year, making it difficult to draw definitive conclusions from past data. Moreover, scientists caution that the intensity of an ENSO event does not always correlate with the severity of its effects. So, what can we expect from the upcoming La Niña? For northern North America, La Niña typically brings a colder, wetter winter, while the southern regions may experience a warmer and drier winter. La Niña is poised to significantly heighten the chances of a more vigorous hurricane season in the Atlantic, potentially leading to an increase in both the number and intensity of hurricanes. For regions like East Asia and Australia, this phenomenon generally results in a marked rise in rainfall. Conversely, in Africa, La Niña can create wetter conditions in the western areas, while eastern Africa often faces heightened drought conditions. The relationship between the El Niño Southern Oscillation, Ienso, and Europe is less straightforward due to the continent's distance from the primary influences, but La Niña is anticipated to bring cooler than normal temperatures to Central and Western Europe, along with reduced rainfall across the mainland while the northern and southern regions may see increased precipitation. Moreover, we must address the implications of La Niña forecasts. The extremes of El Niño and La Niña within the ENSO cycle have been observed for thousands of years, yet the effects of climate change on this cycle remain uncertain. Although we witness short-term localised temperature fluctuations due to ENSO, the overarching trend of global warming continues to rise. This situation places us in uncharted waters. There is compelling evidence that as our planet warms due to climate change, the frequency and severity of extreme weather events will likely increase. However, the ENSO remains a complex and often unpredictable global phenomenon. In recent years, both El Niño and La Niña events have intensified and become more frequent, resulting in a surge of droughts, floods, heat waves, wildfires and extreme storms. As evidenced during the last La Niña event from 2020 to 2023, while the precise impact of global warming on the ENSO cycle is still unclear, it is evident that climate change is expected to exacerbate these effects. Fortunately, Life on Earth is remarkably resilient and adaptable. As our planet continues to evolve alongside the age-old ENSO fluctuations, scientists will gain deeper insights each year, enhancing our ability to predict this intricate climate system. The La Niña phenomenon is sure to provide us with valuable insights into the climate of our planet. It's crucial that we remain attentive and leverage these lessons to adapt and prepare for a sustainable future.
As we wrap up this deep dive into the powerful effects of La Nina on our planet, it's clear that these cycles are a reminder of Earth's dynamic nature. From the oceans to the skies, every shift carries a lesson. And understanding these patterns is key to preparing for what lies ahead. The question now is, how can we adapt and thrive in the face of such changes? What do you think will be the most significant impact of La Nina in 2025? Share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Let's spark a conversation about our shared future. If you found this exploration of Earth's climatic forces insightful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Interconnected Zone. Your support helps us uncover more mysteries and bring them to light. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed and keep exploring the interconnected web of our world.